Welcome back everyone. Over the next two videos, we will focus on understanding the ways to disable the submit button. The scenarios under which you want the submit button to be disabled is completely dependent on your own requirements and how you want the user experience to be. I will go through two scenarios, but you are free to disable the submit button based on your app requirements. The two scenarios are one, disabling the submit button based on the validity of the form state, and two, disabling the submit button when form submission is in progress. In this video, we will focus on scenario one and we will take a look at scenario number two in the next video. Now the first scenario, I want the submit button to be disabled if the form state is invalid. To implement this functionality, we need to understand few properties in the format props object. Remember, in the last video, we implemented the render props pattern for the formic component, which gives us access to this formic props. If we take a look at this in the browser console, you can see that it is an object that helps us manage our entire form. In this list of properties, our first focal point is the is valid property. Let's understand how it works. Now, is valid is a read only property that is set to true if the errors object is empty. So on page load, you can see that the errors object is empty. So is valid is set to true. Now I can simply click inside the channel field and click outside. This will populate the errors object. And since the errors object is not empty anymore, is valid is set to false. So is valid is a property that lets us know if the form has no errors at any given time. We can use this property to disable the submit button. So back in VS Code, on the submit button, I'm going to add disabled is equal to not formic dot is valid. So if the form is not valid, disable the submit button. Let's go back to the browser and test this out. On page load, you can see that the submit button is not disabled. Now this is a bit strange since we know that email, channel and comments are all required fields, but they're currently empty. However, the submit button still being enabled is not a bug. It is simply following our instructions. We have told the button to be disabled only if is valid is false, which in turn is telling disable the submit button if the errors object is not empty. On page load, the errors object is in fact empty. So obviously, is valid is true, our form state is valid, and the submit button is enabled. If you click on the submit button, it now populates the errors object, which in turn sets is valid to false. And now our submit button is disabled. If we resolve all the errors, the submit button is enabled again and we can submit the form. For me, I am perfectly happy with this behavior. However, there would be some client who wants the submit button to be disabled until all validations have been met right from the get-go. Now there are two ways to solve this. The first one is to add validate on mount prop on the formic component and set it to true. So back in VS Code on the formic component, validate on mount and since it's a boolean prop, we don't really have to set is equal to true. So just add validate on mount on the formic component. And you might have already guessed what this does. On page load, as soon as the form mounts on the DOM, formic will run the validations against each field and populate the errors object. If the errors object is not empty, is valid is false. If is valid is false, the form state is invalid 
and hence the submit button is disabled. So back in the browser on page load, you can see that we have the errors object already populated is valid is false, which means our submit button is false. Although this option seems to work fine, there is a drawback. If you have a form with 20 or 30 fields with complex validations, it really doesn't make sense to run all the validation rules even before the user has typed in a single letter. So this first option of using validate on mount is perhaps suitable for a form with very few fields with simple validations. Next, let's take a look at the second option. And that is to use another property present in the formic props object. If you go back to the console, inspect the formic props object, you can see that there is a property called dirty. And this basically is a Boolean value, which indicates if at least one of the form fields value has changed since it was initialized. And the last part of the sentence is very important. Let me show that to you. On page load, dirty is set to false. So none of the values have changed. Now I click on channel and then blur out. If you take a look at the updated formic props, the errors object is populated, but dirty is still set to false. If you have ever changed any of the field values to something different from what the initial value is, it gets set to true. So if I reload the page again and remove a letter from Vishwas, you can see that dirty is set to true. Let's see how we can use this property in conjunction with the is valid property to disable the submit button. I'm going to go back to VS code and comment out validate on mount, which was our first option. Now on the submit button, I'm going to add the condition disabled is equal to not of formic dot dirty and formic dot is valid and let me format it in simple english we are telling formic to disable the submit button if the user has changed any field value and the form is not in a valid state if we now save the file and go back to the browser you can see that the submit button is disabled to begin with fill in the first four fields and we are able to submit the form. Now, although this seems to be a much better way, there is again a drawback. And that drawback is best understood if I show it with an example. Back in VS Code on the initial values object, I'm going to set initial values for email, channel, and comments as well. We at example.com, code evolution, and comments is just going to be ASD. If you now save the file and go back to the browser, on page load, you can see that the submit button is disabled. However, I for a fact know that the form state right now is valid. Just because I haven't changed a form field value, I'm not allowed to submit the form. This is something I don't like. So to make this submit button enabled, all I have to do is change a field's value. So on the channel name, if I remove the last letter, submit is now enabled. But again, I know that my channel name is actually code evolution. So I go ahead and append the letter N. But if I do that, the submit button is once again disabled. So what I want to point out here is that this option of using dirty to disable the submit button is based on the assumption that on page load, that is without the user changing any of the form field values, the form state is always invalid. If you know for a fact, the user will interact with your form and enter values, which will never be exactly the same values as the initial values object, then you can stick to this option. Now, although I make it seem like a really bad option, 
a lot of the times a user would always interact with the form without trying to click on submit. So this definitely is a good option. Again, like I mentioned at the very beginning, it is up to you and your requirements. If you ask me, I'll probably leave it at just not formic.esvalid. All right, that covers our first scenario, disabling the submit button based on the validity of the form state. In the next video, let's take a look at disabling the submit button when form submission is in progress. I'll see you guys in the next one.